All right. Welcome back to the first episode of Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Uh, we're still continuing over from the Lost Things prelude. So we're currently eight years prior to the start of this adventure. And as a little brief recap, you guys started off with effectively all meandering, wandering through uh, the nearby woods. And you each individually came across uh, each other and a strange, small little fluffy owlbear by the name of Juniper. And they seemed to take a liking to everyone. And each of you kind of helped them out in your own little way and bonded with the, the the small critter and it's when suddenly you remember a strange sense in the air a a music filling the distant skies and a twilight began to sort of fade in over the night sky over the well it was like a evening sky and then before you knew it carriages being trailed with uh, magical or at least mystical looking creatures uh, with butterfly wings began to like descend from this opening in the night sky and you could hear the calliope's sound of um, laughter and merriment as this carnival began setting up in a nearby meadow you spent a number of hours kind of conversing with each other getting to know one another and and also playing with juniper before the carnival was finally ready and to this point, Juniper made a mad dash to get inside and basically skirted the ticket booth. You guys followed along, kind of getting caught up in this. And before you knew it, you were already in the actual carnival grounds. And uh, it wasn't long before you <laughs> saw um, that you needed you needed tickets for this for this particular uh, carnival. I think Juniper ran off and unfortunately got snatched up by a clown by a window. Now, they seem to be like recognizing this this owlbear and then pulled it in and asked like where have you been sort of thing. And you went to the feasting orchard where you try to stuff your face with as many pies as you possibly could. Uh, the fairies managed to gift the winner, I think it was uh, Moxie in this instance, with a strange cupcake that apparently works like a potion of invisibility. And uh, yeah, that's your little prize. More more cupcakes. Then you guys decided to um, try out some more of these these uh, rides or stands. And that's when a large, hurly, a burly looking bugbear came over and uh, he noticed you guys hadn't had your tickets stamped. Uh, he threw something small puffball from a satchel to try and put you guys to sleep and then pick you up but several of, several of you managed to make the save and tried to scamper away I believe little eggy ran away hid behind a tent that's when you felt a cold kind of shadow creeping up on you it somehow knew that you didn't have a ticket uh, but before it could do anything more nefarious you managed to kind of get away or resist its cold like effect and you, you managed to reconvene with the others and who had run into a very large feline creature. Uh, this was the displacer beast known as Derlegrom. They had a, a number of other children with them and a small displacer beast cub called Star. And they offered the unconscious party members a drink of this kind of toffee apple cider. Oh, no, cider, not cider. It's that would have been much. It was just a sorry, little juice drink, basically. Uh, the unconscious members came to came to, and you were looking around. Uh, Delagron said that if, if a witch or light found you, you'd probably be in trouble for not owning a ticket. Um, and at this point, the bugbear kind of stormed off, um, mumbling and grumbling to himself. And Delagron said that you're free to kind of look at some of the stands. Uh, and and play around for a while but um she gave you a dandelion each and it seems like each of these petals kind of act as 
one use on these kind of stands. So you're you're left to your own devices for now, um, able to sort of do whatever you please. But uh, you have no idea where that bugbear's gone. But he, he seemed like he was in a huff. And let's let's jump back to the map real quick. Where were we? Hmm. Oh yeah, here we go. All right. I want to try a game. Oh. Yeah, let's so try a game. you can hear the the sounds of the stands. The 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 um. The owners of each stand are kind of calling out to you, saying like, "Come try the wheel of magic." <laughs> another one's, another one's like, "Have you heard of a bandersnatch? Come, come cuddle the bandersnatch." And uh, so on and so forth. One, and you can hear like a light, high-pitched voice like, "Want to bash the boulder? Come bash, bash its eyes in." And they're just like pointing at you guys, like, "You, you guys look like you know how to swing a club." Or a hammer? What game do y'all want to try first? This all looks so amazing. Uh, Eggy makes a beeline for the Bandersnatch, uh, number two. Okay, cool. It sounds like an animal, and he's all about that. So yeah, let's 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 try that one. And he's absolutely not paying attention to if anyone else is following him. So uh, it's up to you guys if you want to if you want to go somewhere else. Becky, He's slow lucky. down so we can see. No, look, it's a thing. Um, Do you know what a bandersnatch is? No, I no. don't. I bet it's scary. Oh, that's the thing. No one knows what a bandersnatch is. Ooh. It's part of the game, in fact. It's hairy, it's scary, it's troublesome. But is it cuddlesome? Can, it, can the fetid be petted? Step right up and find out. So How do I do you it? You can see he's, he's offering like a blindfold to you. He says, mm -hmm. Now put this on. You've got to enter this curtained booth here behind me and hug the hairy bandersnatch. It's a foul smelling thing, so if your senses are good, you might be able to smell it out. And then uh. see, as long, see how long you can hug the thing. Is it going to scratch me if it doesn't like me? Oh, no, no. It's it's quite docile, but you might find some claws. Depends. Okay. Depends if you find uh, him at all. <laughs> uh, okay, so, yeah, I'll take the blindfold. Okay. What do I do? All right, so walk in through here. Go. You'll, uh, it's very... You'll be subjected to a strange smell. It's definitely not like the candy stalls you could you smelt earlier. Uh, but see if you can find it in there. And uh, you see little Eggy walk into this small stand, just wandering forward. And uh, as you do, as you do, you also see he takes the dandelion and, and blows out one of the petals from it. Mm -hmm. And okay. so, as you enter in, you're completely blindfolded. You, you can smell something of a... It's like a chimeric smell. It's... You've got kind of a musty smell, but then also uh, something that almost tickles your nose. Okay. Now, now according um, to Eggy's backstory, he does live and sleep in a stables, so okay. the smell of animals is not repulsive. Like, he knows... He knows the difference between a healthy animal and a unhealthy animal, and you know, manure. He's used to that. So let's, yeah. Right. I'm okay, hoping then. that will be helpful. Yes. Let's hope. Yeah. Let's see if you can make <laughs> a Constitution saving throw. Well, we'll just we'll make it a check. I think it's the same for either way for you, but. Uh, okay. Let's see if you can yeah. in, endure the stench a little bit. Ooh, that's not great. Okay. The smell is pretty bad, and you're you're normally used to this, like you said, being near animals. But this is something else. It's something a little bit otherworldly. Maybe it's something they brought with them from wherever the carnival comes from. And for you, it's 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 too strong. It's pungent, and and it gets it gets right to the back of your throat as well. 
Um, I'm going to also ask you to roll a perception check. Because you failed the con save, I'm going to say you can roll a disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. See if you can even find it in there. I can't remember how to do disadvantage. Oh, wow. okay. <laughs> okay. Disadvantage is 14. Yeah, despite this, despite this um, awful smell, you do seem to find something probably swipes past your leg and as you were getting closer to the scent and yeah you you feel like it's perhaps a long like hairy tail perhaps but it it does kind of brush past your leg and at that point you can sort of meander towards its location and you do start to feel some sort of rough hide and 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 like muscle there Okay. It's uh, it's on the ground. You can tell because it's it's kind of laid out. So it's a, it's probably about shoulder height for you. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he's uh, he's gonna he's gonna crouch down a little bit. So he's not too like I mean, he's not right down on the ground, but he's not his full height either. He's gonna make himself look small and go towards it with his palms facing forward. So, hello, hello, Mr. Bandersmatch. I'm a friend. You hear... Okay, so in response, you probably hear this kind of like snorting yawn sound. It's very odd, but if you had the best guess, like somewhere between like a a warhog or a hippopotamus, if you've ever heard one of those before. But it's to you, I guess, sounds more like a, a pig, but a very large, pig. maybe wide one. Um... Uh, and he's gonna, he's, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, God. oh no, he's gonna, he's gonna take the cupcake that he put in his pocket, and hold it out in an open, on an open palm. Do you want it? Okay, then. Uh, you hear this kind of snorting, sniffing sound, and a heavy breath over your face. Um, then suddenly something wet but rough. It's, it's obviously the tongue is wrapped around your, your whole arm, and then slides it off and you pull pulls the whole cupcake away from your grasp and you're left with slobber on your hands um <laughs> but as it does you you could feel there was probably this very large sets of teeth uh, maybe possibly fangs but mm -hmm. it was hard to tell exactly what kind of uh makeup its mouth was whether it was predatory or or not but it didn't seem to bite down or, or anything like that yeah uh, um, can I tell, like, where its mouth is versus where the rest of its body is? Yeah, yeah, I'll kind say of, you like, can. Right side, left side, okay. Um, knowing that its mouth is occupied, I'm going to go towards it and kind of hug it around the neck, or try to hug it around the neck, the same way okay. that I would with a with a, a cow or a horse. Sure. You go up to where its neck would be, and bizarrely, you don't find any more, uh, like, fur or hide. You actually find scales. And it's at this point you're starting to like lose your mind as to what kind of creature this really is. But um, as you do manage to hug it, I'll, you can make another con save as well. Uh, the scales seem to like shudder for a moment. You're not sure whether it's enjoying the hug or whether it's trying to maybe push you off. But surprisingly, um, you do manage to hold on ahead for at least release a, a nice minute long cuddle with this thing and you hear it's kind of low um growling but it's, it's not like intimidating it's more of um a purr perhaps okay. but it's hard to tell it's definitely eating the whole cupcake though you can hear a, probably a belch after a minute a moment or two yeah Go, oh um, you're nice i never met a scaly whatever you are but i like you can i take my I'm, i bet i'm not supposed to take my my blindfold off I wish I could see what you look like. Oh, but this is probably nice. as you're saying that, you hear the the voice from the outside, <laughs> the the stool, uh, witch hand says, "All right, it sounds like you've had your uh, your cuddle for enough. Come back, come on back out." And uh, you hear uh, the the curtain probably drawn, and a few footsteps before you you feel that. Like, a hand, put, grab yours, and lead you out again. Okay. And, uh, I wave. As I wave as I as I as I leave. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you hear this kind of like. Bum, bum. Bye. And a, and a kind of probably a thud. Maybe it's where its head went back down onto the ground. And as you're led back out, 
to the others. Um, he's asking you as you go. It's like, so, tell me, um, are you able to describe your experience to the rest of your friends here? Tell me, what does a banner snatch even look like? Oh, I didn't see it. I had a, a blindfold <laughs> on. I promise I didn't cheat. In, the, in your but... mind's eye. Oh, um, I think it looks like a big pig, but scaly like a dragon. <laughs> and it's got a big, big, wet, yucky tongue, and it smells real bad. Just worst pig you ever smelled. But it's nice. <laughs> it didn't hurt me hardly else? at all. Yeah. How does everyone else react, react to this? Or have you all run off onto your own stands? <laughs> well, Tarquin on the mention of magic is immediately over at the Wheel of Magic, just like, magic? <laughs> all right, so you've run off. So yep. Do I get a prize um, for, for well, not getting scratched? Let's see here. Uh, you did pretty well, I'll say. It was in there longer than most kids I've seen. They'd usually just say the smell is too yucky for them. You know what? Sure. You I live into... in the stables. I, I, I don't mind. It was a pretty bad, pretty bad, but not the worst. Have you ever seen you went... um, when an ox gets gets the runs? It's it's pretty gross. Oh no! <laughs> well, hopefully, uh, we don't have any of those on our on our hands. Still, you've definitely you've definitely proven yourself, and for that uh, suitably strange description, you can have. This and he hands you a little, this little bottle. At first, you think it might be, uh, what's it called? Like one of those bubble blowers. Um, but it doesn't seem to have the, the little stick to blow the bubbles through. Uh, mm -hmm. instead, it just has like a little cork on the top. And he says, This is a little potion of bubble breath. What's it do? You probably would have seen some if, uh, when that thing let out its belt. I told you I didn't cheat. I didn't see. I smelled oh, the no, I smelled the belch for sure though. 